Hello, welcome back to another short clip from Britain's Hidden History. And this time we've got some fascinating discoveries on a map that Paul has sent through to me. I just want to emphasize, I rely heavily on people sending contributions, all right, and observations. It's a big part, it's a group exercise. I always give attributions, I'd like to give this impression I'm some sort of genius sitting here finding all this stuff. It's not the case. And I will check, so if you send something through, you want to keep it private, you don't want your name shared, anything like that, no problem, okay? But uh, Paul's done a great job here, and he sent me uh, something, uh, some good maps to show you. So I'll just, he also, quite often I'll just take the maps and information I'm given, attribute them, and then present. But he's written his brilliant email as well. So with his permission, I say I can't improve on that. <laughs> Let's go as it is. Right, so hi Ross, sorry I was late to the party by missing the Sunday live video, but caught your later five minute one in the week on the Rutland dig, which is very good. Thank you. The Rutland dig, if you haven't seen it, it's when right in the middle of England, in Rutland, they find a mosaic with a British story on it and a British artistic style with British decorations around the edge. So it's obviously Roman. <laughs> That's the life, isn't it? Anyway, you're probably aware of this too, so apologies if this is the case. No need to ever apologise about that. Uh, I've seen some of this, but not all of it, so carry on. Having watched this week's Sunday Live video, where you mentioned your good experiences at the National Library of Wales. Yes, they were good. And i got some videos coming up soon with uh, someone from the library who's going to show how more and more information has been digitised and is available on the internet. So even if you can't get to Aberystwyth, which is about 99.99% of the world, you can still access the archives and be do some research from home. What better to do in a cold winter, eh? Look at old maps. I love them. Right. Uh, it reminded me, anyway, of the Wilson of Blackett interviews I watched a long time ago, where Alan is asked the question, how, where did you start looking for the truth about Arthur? His response was something like, we simply started by looking at old maps. Yeah, he's actually, I think I know the one he says, uh, well, we've got a map. <laughs> and his pr proper card, if we... Anyway, it's notwithstanding all the detailed research, etc., that they did, and how hard they've had to work to prove what was once well-known in Britain, even if all the doubters just simply looked at the attached Cambria typus. It's an old map by Humphrey Lloyd, produced in the 1570s. The evidence is writ large that Arthur was associated with Glamorgan and Gwent. You'll see the mountains above the Vale Cardiff area, clearly described as Arthur Cadair, which means Arthur's seat, or Arthur's seat of presidency, comes from the Welsh word Cadair, meaning chair. A bard is a bard of the Cadair, a bard of the chair. This is obviously prior to the obfuscation of true British history that happened in the 1700s. This is, if you're new to the channel, history and history books and maps before 1700. Give the old story, King Arthur, migrations, all this kind of stuff. Oh, after 1700s, no, it all changes. As a result of world revolution, so there'd be no motive to do anything else other than to represent authentic history in this map. As Alan has said many times, the evidence is hard at the mist than it is to find. So here we go, we'll zoom in in a second. There's Wales, a little bit fat on this version. I think some of the surveying's not completely precise, but it's a brilliant map. Tells you a lot of interesting things. Worth a maybe come back and have a, a pause on it. Zooming into the area in question, you sort of uh, Glamorgan Gwent. The you know, this is Gwent, Morganug, kind of. It's Morganug stretched across. All right. And first thing we see, the one we're looking for, Arthur. There it is Arthur Cadir Cadahir. So that's Arthur's presidency, Arthur's domain, if you like, or his base there. Um, it's a fascinating map. It's really good. Now, the other thing that struck me is you can also get an idea, although I know a lot of these things are now called Norman Mott and Bailey Castles, but you can quite clearly see the, the, the fortress system that was actually defending this area. If you come this way, you've got to pass these, blocking the river crossings. If you come from the coast, you've got to block these. You've got to get past these, coming this way, blocking there. So... I don't know who the Normans are going to be invaded by. They are the invaders. Hey, this is the Fortress Glamorgan, the old British ones. Interesting where I live here near Caerphilly. We all do that on the map, don't we? But what's interesting here is that um, this area, the industrial heartland, the packed population, is empty. <laughs> it's before the Industrial Revolution, which I find uh, quite fascinating. Now we've got another map to look at in a second. Right, so I also attach. A few extracts, one actually, but of the John Speed maps of the 1600s, which show reference to Arthur's, or Butts Hill, and Clan Ifted, north of Cardiff. I had to re-record this video because I missed that the first time, and I'll show you why. Finally, I remember programmes on national TV in my youth. Now, I don't if that means he's in his 60s or he's in the 1960s, but either way, out there now, need help, please, from viewers. If you can remember old TV, it must have been BBC, I think, in that era, 
where they're talking about King Arthur, the Britons, and the Brutus story. Please share the titles or try and find them. It's amazing. Once you know the, the proper name exactly of something, you could, it's amazing what you can find on the internet. It might even be on YouTube, and it would be great to see. Because as we know, the media message has changed dramatically again in the last few decades, and the history being put out now is again very different to what it was even a short time ago. It's all part of what you have to be aware of when looking at history, okay? Uh, so these memories and knowledge have been extended for a very long time. Keep up the good work. All the best, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Right, look at this map. This is fantastic. So first of all, right in the middle, we got Arthur's Butts Hill. Again, thank you. He zoomed in, made this very easy for me. It's much appreciated. You can have a look around yourself. Enjoy looking at all this. Now, the thing that struck me, I got wrong the first time. Because I saw here, Llan Ifdid, which would be through the Church of Ifdid. Which, bizarrely, my children, my boys, play for um, Llaithdid Vaur rugby team. Um, which is interesting, because they don't actually live in a place called Llaithdid Vaur, really. It's kind of on the school and the rugby team. But uh, it's Church Village, Tom Teg, other names. And there is Llan... And I confused it, because look down here, we've also got Clan Ilid. Which I assume that was. This is Clan Ilid, which is the place we say Ilid came to start his ministry. And it could be the first... Uh, Christian worship site in the world. I know they weren't Christians in the first century, Essenes, Druids, whatever they were, but they were the beginnings of what became Christianity. And I think the site itself in the ring is even more ancient and probably used by Druids and who knows what for ancient ceremonies going back as far as you want to imagine. So there we go. And there's Coiti is important, you see. All these places from Welsh history are prominent here, Llanilid, Coiti, all places you visit on this channel. And it's only recently it's all kind of got hidden or obfuscated. A great word from Paul there. So look at these maps. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, I'm going to be putting more stuff up showing how you can look at maps yourself with the help of a researcher for the National Library, which would be great. And see what else you can find. And also your comments on this and if you can remember those old programs. And thank you very much, Paul Healy Jones. Until the next time, Heather.